being a Whovian in this day and age is kind of like being a 21st century Christian. There are so many different ideas of what Christianity is. There are so many different authorities you can look to to define it. You know, what is this, what is a Christian? What is this doctrine or that belief? Uh, you know, there's so many different places you can look and get so many different ideas. Uh, being a Doctor Who fan is very similar. You ask 10 Doctor Who fans what counts as Doctor Who canon, and you'll probably get about 10 different answers. Uh, canonicity in this franchise is is a bit of a beast, and I guess that's probably true with Star Wars and Star Trek as well to some degree um, and other franchises, but it's especially challenging for Doctor Who because not not because we have all these different mediums of like the the the, the television show and the novels and, and audio stories, but because we have so many of these um, TV shows and audio stories and novels. Um, it's perhaps a bit of a well-kept secret, but uh, the Doctor Who novel ranges, plural, actually when you add them up outnumber even the Star Wars books, which is incredible. <laughs> so what is Doctor Who canon? Uh, well, obviously there's no one answer. It's not as though the uh, <laughs> executive producer gets to sit down and say, this is the rules. Here we go. Um, even if one did, you know, they have operating principles or something, the next person along is not bound to it. So, nevertheless, um, as one who cares about Doctor Who continuity and tries to piece these things together as I watch and read and listen, I sort of come up with uh, what I think is a reasonable approach to dealing with what counts as canon in Doctor Who. So, it's multi-layered. Now, I made a video about the many layers of biblical canon. So this is kind of the same thing, the multiple layers of Doctor Who canon. Um, we start with the absolute canon, the, the, that which, cannot, which, which really is not questionable. That's the television show. Classic Who, 1963 to 1989, uh, the Paul McGann Eighth Doctor movie in 1996, and then New Who, 2005 through the present and into however long we go. Of course, even this is still not perfectly simple. Sometimes there's a bit of retconning going on, but in general, it's not that big of a deal. What you have to wonder about are the little little bit specials like uh, Dimensions in Time in the early 90s. Uh, that was a weird crossover with uh, EastEnders, I believe. Um, then there's the slightly less complicated Red Nose Day specials and Children in Need specials and stuff like that with that new who was brought about. And and the, the Christmas specials are tied right into the seasons, basically. Uh, so if you see it on the screen, uh, it's, it's true. It's real Doctor Who. <laughs> Some people leave it at that and say that's the only canonical Doctor Who, uh, but that doesn't actually hold up at all anymore. Uh, there was a mini episode with the Eighth Doctor when he uh, regenerates into the War Doctor, and in that little episode he, uh, not quotes, he names several companions that he had traveled with in the audio stories. So in that short moment of television, a whole slew of audio stories were essentially canonized. And if you poke around um, through the various Easter egg type references early in Yu uh, Russell T. Davies managed to sneak in a number of very subtle possible um, connections to some of the earlier audio stories as well. Russell T. Davies also wrote um, one of the Seventh Doctor novels, so that's pretty fun. Anyway, we're not there yet. So we have the television series, that's the first layer. The second layer, uh, in, in my opinion, are, there, are the audios. Um, not just because they get mentioned, or they're, they're, the companion characters get mentioned in Night of the Doctor when the Eighth Doctor regenerates, but also because they are a, a performed medium. The original or regular actors and actresses for the Doctors and the companions are there. 
So th there they are, you know, chugging away, producing more stories, and it's not visual, but it's there. And it's so, so the audios are sort of the second layer of Doctor Who canon. For the most part, Big Finish Productions has been very attentive to establishing and maintaining good continuity. Very rarely will you find any significant um, you know, discrepancy between an audio story and a TV story. And in general, those discrepancies only take place because New Who television is not looking back to Big Finish's contribution to continuity, and so occasionally you get some odd stuff going on. Then we get to the novels, and that is where things really get complicated, because there is no one Doctor Who novel range. There were the target novelizations, that's essentially where the books begin, and those were just novelized versions of classic Who stories. For the most part, they're the same, but the writers took opportunity to make little edits here and there, make it a little bit better. A uh, classic example of that would be like Warriors of the Deep. Yes, Warriors of the Deep, which was an interesting story, but it was a, generally regarded as a terrible episode because of just the, the Mirka, this, this great monster, is kind of visually uh, disappointing, shall we say. Uh, but the setting of the story and the way that it plays into this global narrative is actually really cool. So if you ditch the uh, the video and, and go back to the go down to the book version, uh, it's actually a really good story. So the the novelizations bring an interesting angle, uh, different perspective. You know, like in the Bible, we got four different gospel books telling us the story of Jesus's life. Well, now we got the novelization version of, of, of various television stories. So different versions of the same story, it's sort of fun. Of course, then when uh, Doctor Who stopped airing on television, it was time for something new. And so they had the new adventures, continuing with the Seventh Doctor and Ace. And that became quite a I don't want to say quite a production, but it became quite an edifice because for several years that was the official, well, insofar you know, as anything can be official, um, cont continuation, con <laughs> continuation of the Doctor Who story. So a whole additional set of uh, backstories and information about Gallifrey particularly uh, was built up in those books. And the TV movie kind of, sort of, stepped all over that with the whole the Doctor is half-human business. And so then you've got the Eighth Doctor novels, the Eighth Doctor adventures. BBC Books took over and, and said, all right, we're going to continue the Eighth Doctor story. And uh, <laughs> a good portion of those books are continuing the story with the Eighth Doctor and, and sort of doing damage control from the movie, trying to roll back some of the half-human stuff and you know, bring the whole romantic side of the Doctor uh, in, you know, into line, trying to make sense of it. So it's actually, a, you know, they're really good books, they're really good stories, uh, but at the meta level they're actually dealing with Doctor Who canon in a very interesting way, trying to step back, backpedal and reconcile with the, the, the Seventh Doctor New Adventures. Besides those two book ranges, there's also the new adve uh, you know, the, the missing adventures and then the past Doctor adventures. And all of those were featuring earlier Doctors before the Eighth. A couple of them included the Eighth Doctor eventually. And for the most part, those were just filling in gaps um, for the past and you know not changing or challenging pre-existing continuity. Uh, a lot of Big Finish's work with audio has been doing that as well. So then you get the new series, the novels for the new series on television, uh, and those, again, are just sort of supplementing what we see on television, adding extra stories and filling in some gaps. So in general, we can see a three-tiered sense of canonicity so far. There is the television, which is the most official. There are the audios, which are um, licensed and essentially canon. They were created to be canon originally. Um, and then there are the novels after that, which 
usually don't contradict, but when you do find contradictions, it's usually between the books and the audios. And usually you're gonna have to side with the audios, partly because they're performed by the actual actors, so it's worth honoring them a bit more. And also partly because um, there are more audio stories. Uh, at least the, the way that they work together tends to establish their views. Uh, so one little example of that, when does the doctor finally meet back with Susan, Susan Campbell, his, his granddaughter? There was an Eighth Doctor book, one of the earlier ones, where he goes to Earth and finally runs into her. And you get a lot of a lot of interesting information about her life up to that point. She had married David Campbell, and they were unable to have children because she is Gallifreyan and he's human. And they had a difficult life, and eventually he died. It kind of bleak. But then eventually the Big Finish stories did the same kind of thing. The Ape Doctor goes back, meets up with Susan. Her husband, David Campbell, has died. And they've had a tough life. But they did have a son. And that's a very interesting uh, play, you know, how, how the Doctor relates to his great-grandson, Alex. Um, so partly because we have Carol Ann Ford and Paul McGann playing their parts again, you got to tip your hat to that version over the book. But also, um, the book was a one-shot story, whereas with the audios, we see the Eighth Doctor with Susan visiting several times. So just by sheer volume uh, and attention, the audios tend to take precedence over the books. Then, of course, there's a whole bunch of other supplementary media out there. There are the comics, which I've never even really looked at myself. Uh, couple computer game type things and you know sort of behind the scenes supplemental books that tell you about stuff and sometimes fill in some gaps that aren't explicitly stated in a television episode or something like that so there are all sorts of uh, ways to glean Doctor Who canonicity um, but when when I'm trying to work it out at least that's my four-piece rule the television series the audios the books and then the comics and everything else. Um, as long as um, as long as they don't interfere with anything above, they fit. Then 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 they count. So that's my methodology. How about yours? <laughs>